I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You crawled my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know mm, The old may you do Jesus when I met you Oh, you called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day I may have forgotten to mention that this is the only clapping song we're going to have tonight. And we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. And so if you came to Lit or Rip, this is your chance. Here we go. I need a rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break out the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. And now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you are my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day seat. Um, so if you've been to one of these before, we have split up in groups and whatnot, but we are going to, if you were here during the fall, we are going to kind of emulate that again, where we're going to allow the Spirit to move and allow you guys to move with the Spirit and share what the Spirit is putting on your hearts. 
So to start off, we are going to do a bit of gratitude and, so, and praises to the Lord. So this will set our hearts right before the Lord and just reflect on how good he is. So um, if the Spirit leads you to testify about something really awesome that God has done, whether that's a miracle, that's a healing, that's someone coming to faith, someone almost coming to faith and they're asking questions, we welcome you to come up here. We will give you a mic. You just have to speak into it. So, Psalm 100 says this in verse 1. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna enter his gates with thanksgiving and, and enter his courts with praise.
Um, so it's, I've been reflecting a lot on uh, my family right now and thinking back to six years ago whenever I started coming here and what a mess my life was at the time. And I just hit six years sober back on January 1st. And uh, but that's awesome. But just the progress that me and my family have made in six years. You know, last night my wife was, you know, going off to do her Bible studies. I'm doing Bible studies in the morning, and my kids, you know, my son comes up and is like, Dad, can we do Bible study together? And that was a real triumph. Just all that change in six years, which is really a short amount of time. But so praise God for that. That's incredible to me. this family of believers they accepted my daughter three years ago um, she started coming here and her growth has just been unbelievable in Christ and she actually says to me mom I'm so thankful COVID hit because I found a prayer life and can I please start coming to the 9 o'clock in addition to the youth and at that time Lee and I have been praying already about whether we should switch churches and decided to make the move. You all broadened your tents. Keep doing that, please, because you've accepted us, and we are so thankful to the Lord for the pathway and the trajectory that he has given us and our family and growth in him, and it's because you guys, and I just want you to realize that with every youth, with every child, there's a family attached to that. So you embracing the child, you embracing the youth, affected our family, and I'm very thankful for that. sure what this was about <laughs> that I had it in my stomach I just kept knowing I don't want to be the one that's always known for coming up here but I can always come up here it's a new thing for me I wasn't like this a year ago <sighs> and my latest and greatest I have been on a journey and it started in 2017 where God told me that I did not trust him enough to heal me and it was true because as soon as I pray I go to plan A then plan B and plan that and I had asked forgiveness, asked him to 
remove my lack of trust and fill me with the faith needed to trust him to heal me. And then he told me that my, my body was flesh and blood, it would decay, and I was to go to him every time. He didn't tell me I was to go to him first. He told me to go to him every time. And then every time I read about healings in the Bible, I'm kind of perplexed because this isn't against physicians at all, but he doesn't tell us to go to the doctor. And when Luke, the physician, was with Paul, and they came upon somebody they needed to be healed, it was Paul who laid his hands on that man to heal him. And so I'm very fascinated in this, and I went through a stage of reading all about natural health, and you know, every time somebody told me a problem, I'd go through the files of my mind, because I knew what they needed. And now, I just want to direct them to Jesus. And I feel like I'm jumping off of something amazing, and Jesus is right there to catch me. And I feel like I have to take the testimony to receive, because every time he was healing anyone, they had to do this act to receive it. They had to take his hand, had to pick up a blanket, had to go wash in a pool. And I feel I'm supposed to tell everyone that I can because I'm going to not need these anymore because if my God can heal my back, my hip, <laughs> I could list all kinds of things. He can heal my vision. And the thing about this is it has to be done through his strength and not mine. And it has to be done through his faith, not mine. Because whenever I consider, but how can I let go of something I'm so handicapped on and I'm so dependent, just like anybody who has a health ailment and they're so dependent on their medicine, I'm, I'm thankful that even though he healed me of these other things, this is taking a little longer because it's helping me to understand what it's going to be like for somebody else who's dependent on something. But um, it's going to be through his strength. And whenever I get bogged down thinking, okay, what am I doing wrong that I'm not receiving this yet? There yet? Yes? I don't have to worry about it. I just have to say, not my faith, God, but yours through me. And I'm just here to praise him today because of everything he's healed me over and everything he's going to continue because I can just keep going to him. This morning, this won't sound like a praise report initially, but this morning I got word that my elementary teacher and high school assistant baseball coach passed away. His name was Dave Warren. And uh, did you know that? Well, Dave Warren passed away today, and I felt like, you know, I all day today I've thought about it. And, uh, you know, I was, I was fairly emotional when I heard it because he was such an incredible man. so proud of me that uh, that I wasn't doing all the same things I've done when I was a kid where he had to paddle me 30 times. And uh, just a tremendous influence. And then uh, even as I grew older, he would check in on me. When I started coaching, he was very proud of me. So when I found out he passed away today, I just thought about
how thankful I am for him and uh, the importance that we play in people's lives and you don't even know it. And I don't know if he knew how much he meant to me, but it was enough that I would get up and cry like a baby in front of you.
So praise Jesus that we can come to him not just when things are bad, but when things are good. That we can just look to him and just praise him for how awesome he is. And as we were praying about tonight and preparing, we felt that fear was still a thing that we needed to bring up. And that there is this fear of man that exists. And it holds us back from living a full life in Christ and fully, 100%, wholeheartedly doing what Jesus has called us to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says this, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty or freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is. If you don't have this freedom, you have the Spirit of the Lord upon you. Are you requesting, God, send me your Spirit? Because He gives it freely. But you have to ask. If you're stuck in a place where you're not in freedom, where is the Spirit of the Lord? Because the Bible tells us there is freedom in the Spirit of the Lord. Not saying that you're just going to automatically get out of your trouble and you're automatically going to experience this freedom. But in Jesus, we have the hope to go through it and to endure because he endured greatly with the freedom he had at the end. It's the ultimate freedom. So we want to give you an opportunity to bring that fear to light. Some of you have to come up here and speak that into the light. The devil loves to work in the dark. So when you bring that to light, there he has no power. Because that's where Jesus is. Jesus is light. So some of you need to, need to speak that right here. Lay that down at Jesus' feet and pick up the truth that he has for you. Some of you may be like, I fear standing up here. I may not say the right words. I'm so scared right now I'm about to say the wrong words, but the Spirit is here, and He will speak through you, and you, He knows what you have to say to, to be able to gain that freedom. And so do not walk out of those doors tonight, latched onto this fear. So we want you to have freedom in the Spirit, to live in that freedom. And you may have to, this may be your 59th time doing it, but to stay in that freedom is a fight. To, to get to that freedom is one fight, but to stay in that freedom is a continuous fight. So I encourage you to come up here, face your fears, lay it down at Jesus' feet, and pick up the truth that he has for you. And there may be times tonight where it's completely silent. Bask in that. Just don't force it. The Spirit is here. As you feel led, come on up. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power 
and of love and of a sound mind. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I have been up here before concerning fear. This was when we were outside at the, uh, at the tent. There was a word that was on my heart and that was fearless. And that is what I want to be in the Lord. There is no need to walk in fear when Jesus gave his life so that I could be free. And yes, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I'm reminded of a song, his love is worth living for. His love is worth dying for because it means freedom, walking in freedom every day, a little more free. His love is worth living for. His love is worth dying for. Because it means freedom, walking in freedom, deeper in intimacy. I'm in love with the king, and I'm free. And I'm not giving up until I have that freedom that Jesus wants me to have. Yeah, I'm freer than I was this summer when I first got up and spoke that word that was on my heart, that fearless. I've been freer since then. I may not be what I'm gonna be, but thank God I'm not what I was. Praise God. out here recently that I have Alzheimer's and uh, Lewy body at the same time and um, you know the devil he, he tries to tear you down even when you're sick it doesn't matter to him you know but um, I just uh, tomorrow will be my 21st day with communion and uh, the Lord had showed me so many things just in my life only that I could do better with, you know. And um, they're just, if you just take the time and let the Lord work through your heart, it's amazing what you can do through Him. love the Lord um, I know there's a lot of things that I would like to say but I can't remember a lot of them when I get up here but one thing that I do know that by his stripes I am healed <laughs>
I'll start crying before I ever get started. I have hurt for a month. I was diagnosed with RA when I come back from Jerusalem in 2017. If it had not been for Gina Tittle, I probably wouldn't be standing here. She has took me under her wing and she has taught me everything I know when it comes to obeying Christ and knowing Christ. I talk to her at least twice a week and every day she prays for me. All last week, I couldn't hardly move. My hands were naughty, my ankles hurt, my shoulders killed me. Thank God for a family that I have now. We've been going to this church for five years. When my granddaughter got sick, this is the church she picked, and we love it. Everybody in here has been wonderful to my family and to me. But most of all, I have found Christ through Mike's preaching and through Brock. I want to say I do have fear, and I think that's why I stay hurting a lot. Gina's teaching me to triumph the fear, to get over the fear. She says there is no fear in Christ. You have to know the Spirit, you have to have the Spirit, and have to work through with the Spirit to get rid of the fear. By the time I do that, I pray the Lord that I stop hurting. I just want you all to know how blessed my family and I are to have you as a family. And Gina, I want to thank you for being the best friend a person could possibly ever have. I love you with all my heart. You and your family have been nothing but good to me and mine. And thank you for everything you've taught me. Lord, you are my savior, and I cannot do this alone. I have been broken, put back together, and broken again. But with your help, I will stay focused. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, thank you. I, just, I just want you to declare that you have no fear. Just, just declare, you say, I have no fear. Just to speak it. Speak it now. We are declaring we are declaring this truth in faith that you have no fear. I have That's what we're here for. That is the body. You're our counselor, our stronghold. Father, we can come to you with everything, whether it's teeny tiny, seemingly so insignificant, or big enough to move mountains. And Father, it's the, the, what you've told me in scripture, that I can come before you and lay everything down and know you've already taken it upon that cross. I don't have to bear it and I don't have to carry it. And for anyone here that's struggling to accept that, I pray that you would bless them. Bless them with the strength to be weak before you. Bless them in order to be able to say, God, I can't do it through me. That's why I need it through you. Father, I pray that you would teach us how to give it all to you, to lay it down at your feet and completely surrender to you every day. And to give us the power that we need to accomplish the task you set before us, such as coming up here or even trying to defy the fear that's in us, Jesus. May we leave here stronger for what you're doing here tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. And then we speak healing over you right now in the name of Jesus. 
the perfect healer, our physician, so you will see it. So, I feel like God was telling me to come up here to say and just share how thankful I am and how much he has delivered me from fear and realizing that I have a long ways to go because I'm scared to death to get up here. Um, but fear has had a huge stronghold in my life for a tremendous amount of years and he has given me so much freedom and victory and healing and progress in being free from fear and walking in that freedom of fear this last year especially and I'm so grateful for that and I can see just living in that peace and there's hope that we can walk in joy and peace and love and not living in fear because fear of man is a snare and perfect love cast out fear and both of those things, just realizing, seeing how God has worked in my life to bring me that freedom and knowing more how I still need to grow there, but just praising him for how much freedom he can bring when we trust and surrender and believe in his faithfulness and his trustworthiness to give him our fears and know that he won't take it for granted when we entrust our hearts into him handle our fears um so now I'll work a little more on the fear of man I guess and getting in front of people but I just wanted to thank him for what he's done and share that hope of knowing there is freedom from fear I don't know why more people don't come to these prayer meetings because I I love them very much and you just feel the spirit move through the room and uh, I've been excited all week for this because uh, there's been an issue that uh, I know that this is going to be kind of the only well not the only shot but the biggest shot that, uh, that we get a prayer to answer because um, Everybody's here together praying for these things. But, uh, so, um, my dad is in a rough way right now. And, um, he's an alcoholic and it's been going on for quite some time. And, uh, it feels so bad to even bring it up just because I feel like it's not honoring my dad whenever I talk about it. But, um, he needs help and, uh, he needs a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer because he's very hard right now and, um, not responsive to any of us. And it's the biggest chance he's got is if uh, we got a bunch of prayer warriors praying for him. So uh, I 
He taught me a lot about God and uh, he taught me how to pray. And um, so it just breaks my heart. Uh, please pray for my dad. Um, I actually just want to pray for you and your dad and your family. God, we just come to you now <laughs> as a body. As living stones, Lord, just to lift up your name, Lord. I want to lift up this man's father, Lord, for healing, for deliverance from addiction. Lord, it's a real struggle, especially in today's world, Lord. And we just pray over his family that healing can come from this, God, and what the enemy means for evil. God, you intend for good. So we just pray this over this man. We just ask deliverance in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My God is a God of the impossible. And I would sit there and say that I was trying to think of something that I fear. What do I fear? And I actually Googled how many times is the word fear used in the Bible? And just a quick reference it said, in some form or fashion, the word, or the phrase, rather, do not be afraid, comes up in the Bible 365 times. 365 times. It says, do not be afraid. Come on. 
Cody, it's okay to ask for prayer for your dad. And if I were to really admit something that I'm afraid of, it's people that I know and that I love going to hell because they do not have a relationship with Jesus. And there's people in my own family's life that I know that my God can save because he's a God of the impossible. But to me, it looks impossible. I was speaking with a friend this week who's in a hard spot, and she said, and the only one that can do, she's just really feeling way down. And she said, the only one who can do something about it isn't doing anything. And I, I really hurt for her in that. And then I was reading in, in Exodus this week, in Exodus 5, where it's getting really hard for the Israelites. But he's sending Moses and he's going to deliver them. But Moses, they're, they're crying out to Moses because now he's made things harder on them. They're supposed to make bricks without straw now. And Moses is talking to God and he says, Oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people and you have not delivered your people at all. I feel like that was a pretty bold thing for Moses to speak to the Lord. He's basically saying, you're not doing it. But then in, the, in chapter 6, it's labeled in my Bible, God promises deliverance. And he goes on in those next 13 verses, and he lays out his plan for Moses and the Israelites. And he says again and again, I am the Lord your God. He is declaring to Moses, I am who I am. I am the Lord your God. I will do what I have told you I will do. And so if there's anybody here tonight who, like me, may be struggling to see how impossible things can be, how impossible things can be made possible, God is who he says he is. I am who I am, says the Lord. So, Lord, I know that you are a God of the impossible, and I can only see just a little bit in front of me. And I know that you see this beautiful big picture. So many beautiful things have been spoken here tonight, God. So many hard things have been spoken here tonight, Lord. Thank you that you hear us. Thank you that you welcome us into your throne room of grace. Thank you that the promises that you made to the Israelites and to Moses in the Exodus thousands of years ago stand true tonight. That you are who you say you are. That you are our Lord. You are our deliverer. You can save the folks in our lives who we think are too far gone. You never gave up on me. You've never given up on anybody in this room. And you will not give up on those folks in our life, Lord Jesus, that need you. Help us to be bold in our faith. In a time of unknowns and uncertainties, may we stand on Christ, the solid rock who is never changing, always present, always with us. Thank you, God, for your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to wrap up tonight with a final song. I just want to encourage you guys to take this and bring it to those people. <laughs> bring this love. Bring this encouragement. Build each other up outside of these walls. Build up the church. Continue to do it. Be with one another. Be with one another. Pray with one another. Before we head into our final song, I'll say a prayer over us. We'll sing. 
and then you guys can go on your way. Father God, I just thank you for tonight. <laughs> I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for your spirit that has been sent out upon us, Lord, through the death of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we bring all these praises to you, God, and thankfulness and gratefulness, God, for you are our God. <laughs> you are our God. We bring these fears to the feet of Jesus, Lord. We ask for deliverance. We ask for your will to be done, God. We bring everything to you, God. But Lord, it is not our will, but yours. Help us to surrender to your will, God. Bless us as we go out this week and help us to be kingdom builders. I just pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight.